Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. If you've watched this channel much before, you've probably seen Eva make a ton of handmade fresh pasta. We realized recently, though, that we've never given her a chance to actually explain in detail how she makes fresh pasta, and it seems like it's high time because it's come to our attention that there are a lot of myths out there about fresh pasta. Myths that need to be debunked. Fresh pasta is a very easy and simple food. But a lot of people, as a lot of people, just make it more complicated than it should be. So today we are here to make it as easy, as easy, as easy, as easy as possible. It's not difficult to make a fresh pasta. It's easier than mastering English. Not much easier. The five myths that we're going to cover today are all things that I used to believe about fresh pasta before I learned how to make it from Ava. As we go through them today, let us know in the comments below if you believed any of these in the past. It's okay. This is a judgment-free zone. I'm the worst offender here. Let's bust some myths. Let's make some pasta. Yeah. All right, myth number one. Making stuff your own by hand, at home, is better than going to a store and buying it, right? I think you'd agree with that in general. In general. I think that's where this myth came from. It's very prevalent. I see people talking about it all the time when they make fresh pasta. They seem to think that fresh pasta is inherently better than dry pasta, the kind of pasta you go buy at the store. It's true and isn't true. It's true because uh, there are several dishes that they require uh, fresh pasta. But also there are dishes that they require the dry pasta from the store that they can be disgusting if you use fresh pasta. So there isn't here uh, one is better, one is worse. Both they are amazing if the both they are used in the right way. For example, Harper, you can think about uh, as a pasta like bucatini. Look at this uh, bucatini. Bucatini is like a uh, spaghetto but with a small hole inside. I don't know how to make bucatini to have a result like that. So in this case, I go and buy the pasta. You see all the time people will make carbonara and they'll be like, oh, I made fresh fettuccine or something for my carbonara. It's so much better. That's they, a lot of eggs. They will digest this carbonara like in two years. Myth number two. When most people picture fresh pasta, the idea of making fresh pasta at home. A lot of people see in their mind that image that they've seen on this channel many, many times of the well of flour and you crack the eggs in and you mix the eggs in. So this myth is that fresh pasta is always made with eggs. That's not true at all. And from a southern point of view, this is a big lie. <laughs> It's real that maybe the most common and the most famous fresh pasta is eggs and, and flour, in this case all-purpose flour. But this is just one kind of fresh pasta because, for example, in the south of Italy, the normal fresh pasta is made with semolina flour and water. So there is a kind of fresh pasta that is made with eggs. It's usually more a northern version, even if today it's all around Italy. Egg fresh pasta has its own uh, specific taste. And in Italy it's used, for example, with a very thick uh, meat sauce. For sure everyone knows uh, ragù alla bolognese. That ragù requires, for example, an egg fresh pasta. They're just totally different. different kinds of pastas used for different purposes and egg fresh pasta happens to be the most commonly made or the most... In the mind of people. Yeah. I think part of the reason also why this is the general perception that egg fresh pasta is fresh pasta is because in a lot of places outside of Italy it's difficult to find dry egg pasta. So if you want egg pasta, you have to make it at home. Not always a fresh egg fresh pasta is required. But for what I'm going to cook today, my dish requires an egg fresh pasta. And this is what I'm going to do. 
For your egg fresh pasta you need eggs and all purpose flour. The ratio is 100 grams of flour, one egg per serving. Today I'm making three servings of pasta, which means that I'm going to work with 300 grams of all-purpose flour and three eggs. This is a general guide because eggs, they can be different. It's not that every chicken in the world makes the same size of eggs. We would love, but it doesn't happen. If your eggs are a little bit smaller, you need a little bit less flour. If your eggs are a little bit bigger, maybe you need a little bit more flour. So you need to adjust. You make an hole like that in your flour. So you create a space where you can go and break the eggs. This third myth ranges from the harmless to the catastrophic. And the myth is that you need to season or heavily season the pasta dough itself. So it can be everything from a pinch of salt in the dough to a lot of olive oil in the dough. I know not everyone has time, but pasta dough is really easy to make. Just combine flour, eggs, and olive oil in a food processor. When you make a fresh pasta at home, you don't season your pasta dough. So you don't need the cheese, you don't need the herbs, you don't need the nothing. You need just flour and eggs. You can add a pinch of salt, but let's be honest, it doesn't make any difference in the taste. So no, you don't season your pasta dough. A little bit of salt? Uh, a little salt A little there. bit of pepper. You must have made fresh pasta before, surely. No, so. I never have. No? Ramen pride right. noodles. It's also real that we have in Italy some exception. For example, shalatielli, that is a pasta made uh, in Napoli, it requires, for example, some uh, herbs. It requires uh, milk, not just flour and egg. But as I said, this is an exception. The oil like changes the texture of the pasta. That's why those exceptions use it. So like, if just you're trying to just make normal pasta, if you add oil in, it's gonna it's gonna change it. If we don't put it, because pasta doesn't need the olive oil inside. Now with a fork, because the fork helps you a lot uh, in this moment. Okay. Use both hands. Use both hands and do what? That's it. Start mixing it together. Oh, that's disgusting. All right. That, there you go. Ah. Yeah. You need uh, to break, break, break the eggs and start to beat the eggs. And while you're beating the eggs, you need to incorporate some of the flour. Pay attention to no break, uh, let's say your uh, here uh, Vulcano, your uh, Fontana, your wall, or call it uh, wherever you want, because in this way you will, big, you will make a big, big mess. With a little bit of patience, you incorporate a little bit at the time. When you see that your mixture of eggs and flour is enough thick that it doesn't leak everywhere, you can clean the fork and start to work with your hands. You can't make pasta if you don't work with your hands. And then you start to, to fold, make the eggs, incorporate the flour. Now you do this, more the dough, the pasta is, uh, is forming. So when it starts to be enough firm, you start to knead your dough. And don't be shy because you can use your strength. Pasta is not so delicate as maybe someone can think. It's also a very good workout. I would suggest. You need to knead your pasta for at least 10 minutes because the dough should be all uh, smooth and uniform. All right. Try and get it really nice and crummy. All right, crummy, there crummy. I don't even know what that means. Well, it's sort of like a crumbled texture. You okay. Know. It can happen sometimes that maybe you add too much flour. You can add a little bit of water until you reach the right consistency. My, my eggs, they were very big today. So my pasta is a little bit sticky. So what I'm going to do, having always some flour, you take a little bit and 
keep working. It's pretty smooth, it's not sticky. If I pinch, push. push. If I push it, as you can see, it comes back. From all these signs, you understand that your pasta dough is ready to rest. It needs to rest at least for half an hour. Much better is for one hour two hours. It's very important to cover your pasta because uh, the worst enemy of your egg fresh pasta or your fresh pasta in general is the air. We don't want the pasta dries out. Before I share the next fresh pasta myth, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Masterworks. Here's something that unfortunately is not a myth. We just came off one of the worst years for investments ever. Now, we're not financial planners. We are just pasta enthusiasts. But, you know, retiring to Italy would be nice someday, and so we gotta think about investing. Major banks seem to know what to do in a situation like this. Where are they stashing their money so it doesn't disappear from inflation? They're putting billions of dollars into alternative investments, physical assets that actually can grow in value in times of inflation. Assets like fine art. In the last year, according to Barron's, art prices rose at an average of 29%. Here's a myth, you have to be a well-connected millionaire to invest in art. That myth is busted thanks to Masterworks, a platform that lets people like us invest in shares of contemporary art. Any one of us can invest in legendary artists like Banksy, Picasso, Monet. By buying shares of an individual piece of art, you can take advantage of the rising value without having to purchase an entire bajillion dollar painting. Just last year, Masterworks paid out over $25 million to their investors. And as the economy looks weaker and weaker, it's no surprise that demand is growing. Which is why Masterworks unfortunately has a wait list right now but because you are a pasta grammarian, you can skip the line. If you visit the link down in the description below, you can start investing in fine art today. A big thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video. Myth number four. This one I think has to come from either the interests of certain manufacturers or from TV shows. And I'm talking about like, like cooking competition TV shows. And so, you know, the contestants will sometimes make fresh pasta and always you see them there furiously at their pasta machines making the pasta. And I think it's led some people to think, it certainly made me think this, that you need a pasta machine to make fresh pasta. No, you don't need a pasta machine to make a, a fresh pasta. It's real that a pasta machine makes your job a little bit easier, a little bit faster, because you put the dough, you roll, and it's done. More right now exists like the electric one, where you need just to oh, yeah. really push a button. They have one for the KitchenAid, we should get one. Mm -hmm. It's easier, but in order to make the fresh pasta, what you really need is a mattarello. Now, this is the most common rolling pin that you can find in America. And if you have this, this is better than nothing. In Italy, we have the mattarello. Now, this is the real Italian tool that you need to make your pasta. And it's big because you can roll big sheets of pasta with this. While with this, you can roll maybe, I don't know, one egg, if you're lucky. And also, this is very good not just to make pasta, but also to discipline your husband. Hey. What's the difference between a mattarello and a pasta machine? The first difference is about the texture of the pasta. Because when you roll with the pasta machine, you have the same thickness for all the pasta that you roll, because you choose the number. But this makes your pasta very, very flat. Anonymous. Yeah, anonymous. anonymous. Yeah. Anonymous. And look, here it comes. It's almost like going to the hairdresser, isn't it? I don't like how they come out of a machine because you lose the handmade factor that is one is a little bit thicker, one is a little bit thinner, one is a little bit longer, one is a little bit shorter. <laughs> the imperfection that usually makes things better. You do use a pasta machine sometimes, though. When are the cases that you use it? Yes, this is real. It's when I make the lasagna. Because in that case, 
you really want uh, like the pasta cook in the same way in all of the four angles of uh, the lasagna. And also because uh, making a lasagna requires by itself a lot of work. A lot so, of pasta, yeah. <laughs> so it's like with the pasta machine it's just a little bit easier. It's the only, because then you don't really taste the consistency of the pasta. It's just an explosion of flavor altogether. While if you are eating a plate of tagliatelle, no, there you can taste the difference. I've seen you make a lasagna with a mozzarella though. It's very See, doable if you want to do it. It exists. It's like then you end up being like Popeye, but that's okay. Like what? Popeye. Popeye. Popeye? Popeye. How do you say? Popeye. He ate a lot of, he ate a lot of uh, spinach pasta. He ate a lot of lasagna. Speaking of lasagna, yes, uh, he, like, he loved the lasagna. <laughs> If it happens that you have uh, a bigger uh, wooden cutting board, you can roll these uh, all at once. But if you have a small one like mine, I suggest to cut just a little bit. It's very important that what is left you always cover. I start to roll this part of pasta, then I will roll also the rest. Sprinkle your surface with some flour. And now, with our mattarello, we start to roll the pasta. Don't forget the flour, because otherwise your pasta will stick on the mattarello, on the cutting board. When you roll your pasta dough, as when you need your pasta dough, you don't need to be delicate. You need your strength. Otherwise, you will never spread the pasta. Try to roll your pasta in every direction, so you can try to keep a big circle. If you like thicker pasta, you can roll it a little bit thicker. If you like thinner pasta, you can roll it a little bit thinner. I suggest usually to have something like that. I know that maybe it can be difficult to see, but you can see the cutting board through the pasta. Sprinkle some flour all over. Start to roll from a side. We are going to cut these into strips. Depending on how, how wide your strips are, you end up having several kinds of pasta. So usually the thinner one is the tagliolini. We have the fettuccine. Then we have the tagliatelle. Last but not least, we have the pappardelle. I just realized, Ava, that we've never actually made a pappardelle dish on the channel. So we make the pappardelle. There are several methods in which you can open your egg fresh pasta. I like to do like that. Take some flour. Sprinkle flour on your pappardelle and start to do like that. If your pasta, when you toss it, doesn't um, open, you can always do like that and open one pappardella, one tagliatella at a time. Myth number five. This is another myth related to a gadget that I think people seem to think that they need when they make pasta at home. There are these little racks that you open and you hang your pasta on it. And I think people are getting the impression that you need to dry your fresh pasta if you want to store it. Let those little bits dangle off and then dry on 
to that, yes? I've never seen you intentionally dry pasta once. In fact, normally the only thing I've heard about drying pasta is you cursing at the heavens because your pasta dried too quickly. In Italy, I don't know, actually, a, a single person has this rack to dry the pasta. We, we don't dry the pasta at home. It's like you make the egg fresh pasta, you cook, you eat, uh, and then uh, the next time you redo it. But I can understand if someone wants to store some pasta. And you don't need to dry your pasta because an easier and cheaper way to do it is just freezing, freeze your pasta. Take your fresh pasta. Remember always to use some flour, otherwise they will stick all together like this. Then create a sort of net. Sprinkle on a baking tray some flour. You place your nest of pasta, put in the freezer, an hour after one hour, one hour and a half, is frozen so you can remove from the tray, put in a plastic bag and save some space in your freezer. And you have always there your egg fresh pasta or your fresh pasta available to be cooked. With every kind of fresh pasta that you freeze and you, you freeze, you just cook it from frozen. It will take maybe two minutes longer than when you cook fresh pasta. But absolutely don't defrost, don't defrost. Thaw, yes. frost, yeah. Don't defrost your pasta, otherwise you will have just a mappazzone, a mushy mappazzone. Well, now that we have a bunch of pappardelle, do you want to maybe cook something? Are you hungry? Always. Oh, always. That's a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big... Literally stupid. always. It's a very stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cook a sauce that uh, is, the per is one of the perfect pair for our fresh pasta and is uh, a mushroom sauce. If with pasta it's not always real that the fresh one is better than the dry one, when it comes to mushroom maybe this rule is real, but what I have is just dried mushroom. And because they are dried, I need to soak them. a little trick that sometimes I use. So what I'm going to do is spread some tomatoes, tomato paste here, then use some water of the soaked mushroom and this amazing mixture full of flavor. A little bit more. Why not? And I'm going to pour this amazing mixture here. Fresh pasta cooks much quicker than a dry pasta. Usually it will take maybe Two minutes.
it smells so amazing in here. This is called Harper Tocco de Funzi, which means mushroom sauce, mushroom ragu, but in Ligurian dialect. I'm excited to try it. I permit to. Also because it's kind of crazy, we've never made pappardelle anything on the channel before. So we made pappardelle with tocco de funzi. <laughs> no, the smell is really something unbelievable. Buon appetito. There's a reason why people think that fresh pasta is inherently better, and that's because when you find the right use for especially fresh egg pasta, it's unbelievably good. Remember, Alper, not always is better. I, I can't see, for example, an amatriciana with pappardelle, but it's also real that I can't see bucatini with this kind of sauce. <laughs> yeah. So here the fact is that every pasta has its own sauce. There isn't one that is better than another. I know, it's so good. <laughs> it also wouldn't be the same with a fresh semolina pasta. Two totally different tastes. If you used fresh semolina pasta in this, it would completely change the dish. It might be really good, but it would completely change everything. Everyone knows in the world that pappardelle ai funghi is one of the best pasta dishes in the world. Well, you know, Ava, I'm eating this pasta and I'm starting to think that, you know what it's really missing? It's missing a pinch of salt in the pasta dough. No, Arper, you can't taste because the salt in this pasta dish comes from the water in which you cook the pasta and the salt of the sauce. So you can't really say the difference. What I can tell the difference is the quality of the pasta when it's handmade and hand rolled. It's like, as you said, it's like the imperfections that make the perfections. It's like no piece is exactly quite the same. The taste of the pasta when you roll it by hand is completely different. It is much, much better. And because we can freeze this to keep pasta on hand whenever we want, it means I can have this dish all the time. See, I'll per se the truth, we never freeze our pasta. <laughs> because it's like, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't arrive to the freezer. It doesn't, no, it doesn't no. arrive to the freezer. But you can. Guys, we hope you learned something new about fresh pasta today. If you did, or even if you just enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also check out our merch store down below. You could get a fork twirl t-shirt just like this one. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action who made a beautiful looking plate of homemade tagliatelle. Looks delicious. Amazing, very, very good job. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. One thing is for sure, it's not a myth that pappardelle goes really well with mushrooms. No, pappardelle mushrooms. That is no myth. They are like full of camicia. <laughs> pappardelle mushrooms, they are like full of camicia. But let's be honest, pappardelle, they can be full of camicia with a lot of things. <laughs>